There was an old cemetery from 1855 on part of the Don and Nordis Estrum farm southwest of Cannon Falls. But by this time, most of the markers of the burial sites had disappeared. But Don wanted to fix it up. It's a matter of honoring those who have gone before, their struggles, their joys, their lives. So Don researched through historical information from newspapers and such and figured there were 17 to 18 graves there. If, if you read this one here, it's the obituary for Mrs. Monet Bondi, which is one of the last burials there. And uh, uh, had kind of a nice write-up, but that was in, what I did was I had to copy this out of the paper, uh, out of the Kenyan paper, because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get them on the copier because they were, they hadn't been microfilmed yet. Now I, I'm, I think they're maybe on microfilm somewhere, so. But then Don had to face this problem. How do you find the graves? Don is in the excavating business, so he used his equipment to shave off the first few inches of topsoil. This was black in color. Then you could see the reddish rusty color of the clay that identified the soil that had been put over the coffins. Can you describe to me how you can identify, it. you took off six inches of topsoil and this you can, is... You, you can see, well you, if you take the topsoil off and get down to clay then you'll see lighter Kids clay for where the grave is. But back up a minute. First, they had to find where the coffins might be. A fire back in the 1930s apparently burned off all the wooden markers. Keep that in mind as you look at the cemetery today. A friend of Don's had the answer. Pete Fredham would use a divining rod or a dousing rod to find the sites. These rods have been used historically to look for water for digging a well, etc. Pete hadn't used them to find grave sites before, but he had used them to find a lost book one time. Anyway, it was worth the attempt. There's one edge. There's the other edge right here. And I can back up on this edge. You go like right that. In the center now, Pete, going what we found. Yep, yep. If you watch carefully, you'll see that every time Pete goes over a grave site, the rods swing together and cross. The second edge opens up again. If I walk backwards, right on that edge. Pete seemed amazed himself at how the rods worked at the cemetery sites. You see I'm pointing them down a little bit so they have to swing uphill to cross. Mm. The tips are down just a little bit. Dowsing has never been scientifically proven to work in a controlled setting, I understand. The practice remains popular in many parts of the world. The idea is to bend two identical pieces of wire into an L shape and hold one in each hand by the short part of the L so that the long part is parallel with the ground and so they can swing freely from side to side. You can use coat hangers to make these rods. Some dowsers claim certain metals, such as brass, to be more effective. They have a genuine marker to use a flat stone like that to mark the head and the foot. And uh, I, I didn't find 
I didn't find them as they were, but they were laying down. So, so anyway, we're confident that this grave is by itself away from the other part of the cemetery. We're not sure about that one. We think it's a child's grave, probably. He was killed when a, a tree fell on him when he was really? cutting a tree. I got a notice in the paper that he died and was buried here. So that's why he's got a marker and a date. This is his wife, Maudit. And uh, she died, of course. Usually, usually the way it was in the old days like this, uh, if you died first, you got a monument. If you died last, you got a wooden cross. Maybe. So... <laughs> So, uh, but, uh, anyway, yeah, so these people lived east of here, uh, west of here a couple miles, <coughs> Old E.T. Bondi and Mary Bondi, and they lived uh, west of here a couple miles also, and uh, common denominator seems to be all first generation from Baldur's of the Hoggy Church. That's the common denominator. And Hoagie and they, they were followers of his. Mm. They believed that lay people could be every bit as effective being a preacher, you know, as a, as a trained professional. And so they did a lot of uh, their own, I don't know, lay preaching, I guess, and, and lay visitation and so on. It seems fitting to just take a quiet look around the cemetery. Before we leave, come along. Thanks to all who took part in our program, and thanks to you for watching Along the Way with Rosie.